Hi, I know that many of you, like me, are big fans of the reverse sear method of cooking a steak. But recently, I have discovered some new techniques to add to the reverse sear that make it an even better process than before. And you're going to want to know these secrets. So come along and join me. I'm Ralph. Welcome to my kitchen. Let's get started. I'm doing a big old New York strip steak here. This is what it looks like. It's nice, nicely marbled. It's a choice. I picked this up from Wild Fork, which I've started using their, their meats. They're not sponsoring me, at least not as of, you know, this video anyway. If you're listening out there, you know, Wild Fork people, I would love to have you as a sponsor. But this is a great looking steak. I'm petting it dried. Now, earlier today, I also patted it dry, and I also took the time to season it. Used coarse salt, that was the only thing I used. Did it on both sides. Then I stuck it into the refrigerator, and I did this several hours ahead of time so that it can be tenderizing. Now what happens is a process of osmosis is taking place. The salt is pulling the moisture out of the meat. And then in time, that moisture is getting reabsorbed back into the steak along with the salt. It helps tenderize it at the same time. Now at this point, I'm also going to be adding some additional seasoning to it. I'm using one of my favorite seasonings here, the Bearded Butcher's Black. Follow them on the Bearded Butcher's channel. Got a generous coating on there. My wife and I love this, Gunner loves this. And I'm gonna be putting it into the oven. But first, I'm using my meter probe thermometer. I'm sticking it in the end here, getting it toward the center, because I wanna be measuring the core temperature. Now, before you do anything, if you're doing this, flip it over, make sure that it's not poking out the bottom side because that's gonna throw off your measurements. I want to make sure that I'm pulling this out of the oven at just the right time. I'm going to be shooting for about 115 to 116 degrees Fahrenheit for pulling it out of the oven. And that's when things are going to start to change. So I'm going to pop this into the oven and we will be right back. Okay, the internal temperature has just come up to 115 degrees. So it's time to pull it out of the oven. Now that's the ideal temperature for working its way toward medium rare. I'm going to have a chart down below to show you the different temperatures. But for medium rare, which is probably the best way to serve steak, this is the time to pull it. And this is where things start to change. Normally, you would go straight from the reverse sear right into the pan to do the regular sear. Not this time. We've pulled it out and now it's going to rest for between 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to hit the timer on that. And in 20 minutes, I'm going to come back to this and then we're going to sear. So what's happening here? We're giving the outside of the steak a chance to cool down. Because then when we put the sear on it, we're going to have longer time to work with to get the perfect sear on it. So. In 20 minutes, I'll come back and explain more about that to you. Okay, the 20 minutes is over for the resting period. Now, you could have gone a little bit longer. Right now, the internal temperature of that steak is 102. So, the outside, it, it's cooled down a lot. That's going to give me extra time to do the searing. Now, here's the next change that we're going to make. First change, the resting of the steak first. Second change, the Maillard reaction happens up to 350 degrees. Over the 350 degrees, something called the pyrolysis happens, and that's actually the charring. Maillard reaction brings about the Maillard flavors, and the charring brings out a little bit more of a bitter flavor. Now, some people like the charring, and sometimes I like that charring too. I like the char on a good hamburger. Sometimes I like the char on a good steak that was done over the 
hot coals of a, a grill. But right now, I am just going for the Maillard flavors and the Maillard reaction. And I'm going to be putting the, the steak in there. Now, I have been checking this pan to make sure that my pan is reading at about the 350 or lower temperature, and I'm pretty much right there right now. If it's a little bit lower, that's okay. It'll just be able to handle a little bit more sear. The sear is gonna take place no matter what. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is, there's some pretty good fat on the side of this. I'm gonna use that fat to render down where it's gonna be cooking in its own oil. I put it down. We are going to be flipping this every 30 seconds. And that will help create more of a, an even cook on the, the inside of the stick. Time for our first flip. So as you can see, after 30 seconds, that's not getting you a great char, but it is starting in certain areas. What we're doing is we're building that char up. Okay, able to put a little bit of butter on it. Another 30 seconds. Time to flip again. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that when you're cooking it at the lower temperature, the 350 approximately, you're not getting a lot of smoking. You're not getting a lot of splatter. Nothing is flying up onto your hands and arms as you're trying to change. It's actually a much more pleasant way to cook it. Now this is probably gonna be the last 30 seconds because the internal temperature is now at 128. Just give a little extra sear on the side here. That's it. Okay, now, this seemed like an awful lot of time to spend waiting on it in the oven, waiting on it to rest, but that gives you time to do other things like prepare the rest of your meal. During the time that it was in the oven, I was able to cut up and boil some fries, get them all dried out. During the time that it was resting, I was able to stick a basket of fries into my hot air fryer. Check that out. So I will dump those. Going a little crazy here. Love those silicone liners for the hot air fryers. Add a little bit of salt. Set those off to the side because it is steak time. Let's see how this turned out. Oh, that is looking really nice inside. Take the slices off here. Let me show you how these are turning out. That is really juicy, nice, cut up a little taste here. Oh, that is so nice, so nice. That salt flavor goes right into the center. It just pulls apart the flavor on this. It's just incredible, it's so juicy. So you can see, well, let's try one of these fries. Boiled them in uh, water with salt and vinegar for about eight, nine minutes, dried them out, 
Popped them in the air fryer. Good firmness. Hmm. So light and fluffy inside. This is gonna be a great meal. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, consider a subscription, and I will catch y'all the next time. Bye-bye.